Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Phil. Welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. Today we're going to look at a couple of PCI graphics cards and how to perform under DOS games on a Pentium MMX running at 233 MHz. A couple of videos ago I had the idea of asking you viewers what kind of system should we build and you guys picked a Socket 7 machine and you chose the Zeng ET6000 graphics card. However, I have listened to your comments, so what I'm doing now is going over those cards that unfortunately did not get picked and we're going to have a look at how they perform against the Zeng ET6000 that we did end up using. I will spend some time talking about each card in a little bit more detail, especially uh, regarding availability and pricing. So we've got cards from S3, Cirrus Logic, Trident and the Zeng ET6000. The first card is a real favorite of mine. It is the S3 Trio 64V+. Often when people ask me, hey Phil, what PCI video card do you rec recommend for DOS games? I usually mention this card, but how does it compare to the others? And that's something we will find out soon. Now, in terms of availability and pricing, do keep in mind that this is from uh, Australia. So looking at eBay US, you might actually find cheaper prices. But what I found is that this card is really easy to find. You just type in the model number and you should get a lot of options with buy now prices. And you're looking at around uh, between 20 and 30 Australian dollars. So not too expensive and readily available. The next card is from Cirrus Logic. It is the Cirrus Logic GD5446. You've got to pay attention to that model number because there are lots of other Cirrus Logic cards out and about. Availability is fairly good. You should not have a hard time finding this particular model. In terms of pricing, between 20 and 40 Australian dollars, so a little bit less common than the S3 cards and also a tiny bit more expensive, but still very easy to find and still very affordable. The next card is from Trident. It is the TGUI 9680-1. Now, looking on eBay, you will find quite a few PCI Trident cards. However, to find the one with this model, the cheapest I found on eBay Australia was actually 45 Australian dollars. So that is a little bit of a concern. We will look at the performance later and see if it makes sense to go with the Trident. And the last card is the Zeng ET6000. This is the graphics card that you guys voted on and that we've used for all the recent benchmarks. But now it's time to find out how it compares against the other cards. Having a look on eBay Australia, these cards are available, but prices can get quite out of hand. The cheapest one I found was 45 Australian dollars. However, the next cheapest one was 80 and after that $250. So the Zeng ET6000 is a, is a little bit of a collector's item, especially um, because of these unique memory chips. It has a very cool look and it, it is kind of one of the last uh, Zeng cards. I think there's a 6100. But so, yeah, if you're looking for this card, be prepared that you might find it a little bit harder to obtain and that you might have to spend a little bit more money. One other tip I'll give you when looking for a graphics card is to watch out for these memory sockets. You, very often cards have memory chips soldered onto the PCB and then some of them have extra memory slots that usually allows you to upgrade from one megabyte to two or something like that. So do pay attention if the memory sockets are empty. I personally, I would not buy the card. These uh, memory chips can often cost quite a bit. So do look for a card that has the memory sockets filled or at least take that into consideration when you're comparing the prices. It is usually cheaper to pay a little bit more and get a card that has all the memory already upgraded rather than getting one that has empty sockets and then having to hunt down those particular memory chips. Okay, time to look at some benchmark results. Here we've got the specifications of the test setup. It's based around the Cyrix 6x86 video project we did a couple of weeks ago. First up, we have 3D Bench 1.0C. The Zen card is in front with 183, shortly followed by the S3 with 176 and the Cirrus Logic with 174. 
quite a distance behind the rest is the Trident with only 122 frames. In Chris's 3D bench we see the same thing, the Tsang is in front, followed by the S3 and then the Cirrus Logic and the Trident with quite a distance behind the pack. In the PC player benchmark at 320 by 200 all the cards are a lot closer to each other. The Tsang is in the front but the S3 and the Cirrus Logic are tied with 57 FPS and once again the Trident quite far behind with 47. In games, the Tseng is not the fastest card anymore. Serious Logic dominates the Wolfenstein 3D benchmark, followed by the S3 and then the Tseng card. And once again, the Trident is also slower in games. We can see the same picture in Doom. The Serious Logic takes the lead with 99 frames per second. Then we've got the S3 card and then the Tseng card. And a little bit behind, not as far as uh, in the other games, the Trident with 87 frames per second. In Quake, the Tsang card is once again the fastest performer with 52 FPS. However, the S3 and the Serious Logic cards are only one frame behind and once again the Trident being the slowest card. At 640x480 resolution, things get very interesting. We have another graphics card in here. Well, it's actually the same graphics card. So if we look at the two scores for the S3, there's the uh, first result uh, at the bottom with only 31 FPS, and that's the S3 card without any software. And I was shocked. Um, I didn't know that the S S3 card struggles at that resolution, and I tried actually two cards and I got the same results. Now I did a bit of search on searching online and you actually need to load a little driver. It's the S3 VBE and that loads, loads some uh, Visa extensions and basically speeds up the card under 640 by 480 and then the card is actually the quickest, uh, getting 51 FPS at Duke Nukem 3D at 640 by 480 followed by the Tsang card with 46 and then we've got the Cirrus Logic tying with the Trident at 41 FPS. So if you got an S3 card and you're playing games at 640 by 480 definitely you should be running the S3 VBE driver. I will put a download link down below in the, in the description. In Descent 2 there's not much to look at. All the cards getting 36 FPS. Only the S3 car card if you don't have the S3 VB driver loaded it will only give you 27 FPS. And the last benchmark Wing Commander 4 this is really limited body processor they're all getting 8 FPS and look that sounds terrible but this is a really stressful test it's in, on the second level right in the hangar inside the uh, large ship and this is really the worst case scenario. As soon as you leave the ship you will get the full uh, 24 FPS. So in this benchmark they're all getting 8 FPS heavily limited by the processor. So starting with the S3 I'm just gonna summarize the results and talk about each card in a little bit more detail and then at the end I'll pick my favorite card that I think represents the best choice in terms of, terms of overall performance, pricing, compatibility and cost. In benchmarks at 320 by 200 the S3 is pretty much the second fastest card, just a little bit behind the Tsang ET6000. In actual games running at 320 by 200 it is also pretty much the second fastest card in all the benchmarks behind the Cirrus Logic and the Tsang card depending on what game you're playing. It was only after loading the S3 VBE driver that the performance was competitive. Unfortunately, that driver does consume 4 kilobytes of memory. However, with the driver loaded, the S3 card is the fastest performer at 640x480 in Duke Nukem 3D. A lot of these cards output the wrong black level and that manifests in having when you turn on the machine instead of a nice black background with the font in white you will have a gray background. Now there are solutions uh, I'll put down in the description a link to Vogons a couple of uh, Vogons members have found ways around it but still that's now two issues that you need to deal with the performance issue at 640 by 480 which you have to load the driver for and the VGA output so I'm quite surprised um, that might change my 
uh, recommendations going forward if people ask me what video card I do recommend. But apart from that, this is still a very decent card, performs well, is very compatible, and it is likely the easiest card to find at a good price. There are a lot of these out there. Next up is the Zero's Logic card. Now this card doesn't really do anything wrong. So let's have a look at the performance. In benchmarks, it is not the fastest card. It is usually at the third place, just behind the S3 and D10. However, everything changes when we try out actual games. At least in Wolfenstein 3D and in Doom, this is the fastest card. And in Quake, it is only beaten by the Zeng ET6000. At 640x480, I think we would have to look at more games to make a definite conclusion. At least in Duke Nukem 3D, this card is definitely slower than the competition. Descent 2 and Wing Commander 4 don't really give us any new information. All the cards perform at the same level. So all in all, this is a fantastically balanced card. It does everything right. It doesn't have any issues, doesn't need any drivers loaded to get things going. It is also relatively easy to find and you shouldn't have trouble finding one for a decent price as well. So yeah, really well balanced card and definitely one to watch out for. The Trident is a little bit behind the competition. It doesn't matter if we're looking at benchmarks, at games at 320 by 200 or games running at 640x480. The other cards are usually a step ahead. Combined with the fact that this card is a little bit harder to find on eBay and the cheapest I found this exact, exact model for was selling for 45 Australian dollars, I think this is going to be a hard product to recommend. And the final card, of course, is the Zeng ET6000, a awesome performer in benchmarks. So if you're looking for a card that does really well in benchmarking, maybe you want to do a processor uh, roundup, then this card is for you. Across the board, it benchmarks the fastest. In games running at 320 by 200, the Zeng is still fast. However, the Cirrus Logic was able to take the top spot, at least in Wolfenstein 3D and in Doom. In Quake, however, this is the fastest card, beating the S3, Trident and the Cirrus Logic. At 640x480 resolution, this is also a very decent card. Now in uh, Wing Commander 4 and in Descent 2, all the cards perform at the same level. However, in Duke Nukem, this is the second fastest card. It is only beaten by the S3. Availability and pricing is the real concern for this card. You will struggle finding one and you will likely have to spend a little bit more money. Although I was able to find one card listed at 45 Australian dollars, the second cheapest price was $80 and then it jumped straight to 250. So this will be a card that you might have to put on the search list and just wait a few weeks to see if something uh, appears at a decent price. Okay, time for the final conclusion. We have a really good idea of where all these cards are at. Let's start with the Trident. To be honest, this is not a card I will likely recommend. In terms of performance, it's behind the competition in pretty much every way. Next up, we've got the Zeng ET6000. If the prices were lower, then this would definitely be a recommendation. Unfortunately, you will have to pay a premium and you're not really getting anything. So unless you just want something for benchmarking, you know, imagine you're paying $50 for such a card and you're not really getting extra performance. I think the only game where this uh, graphics card was faster than the other cards was in Quake. So look, if you're playing Quake and you want that few extra frames, maybe this is the card for you, but otherwise, um, I th I'm finding it difficult to, uh, to recommend this card as an overall package. So that leaves us with the S3 and the Series Logic. Now, initially, my thoughts was I will definitely going to recommend the S3 card, but because I tested all these benchmarks and I ran into some issues, my opinions have changed a little bit. Look, if you just want to buy a graphics card and you don't want to muck around with drivers and you want something that is fast, cheap, easy to find and gets the job done, my recommendation is the Cirrus Logic. I still think the S3 is a decent card for its compatibility and decent performance in most of the benchmarks uh, at 320 by 200. It is the second fastest card and at high resolution, at least after loading the uh, Visa driver, it is the fastest card in Duke Nukem 3D. However, having to load a Visa driver for 640x480 games is a little bit annoying, especially losing 4 kilobytes of memory. 
But even worse is the issue with the VGA output. There is no way of telling by looking at an eBay auction if your card has that issue or not. I've got around four cards of these and two cards have the issue, two cards don't. So there is really no way of telling. You'll only find out when the card arrives and you use it in your computer. So there you have it. The S3 did disappoint me a little bit and that's why I recommend the Cirrus Logic foremost because it does everything right, it performs well, it is compatible, it doesn't have any issues, it's uh, reasonably easy to find and you should be able to get it at a fairly cheap price. And that's it for this video guys, thank you for watching. As always, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, hit the like or the dislike button, share the video and leave me some comments down below. Next week we will look at another Cyrex processor, this time a high-end chip. Will it be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Intel or will it fall short just like the 686 that we used in a previous video?